pawned as K. Gandhi, attorney at law. But they cannot take away our self-respect if we do not give it to them. You've done me a great service. Not at all, sir. Richard Attenborough offered me this script. I went to his home and he offered me this thick script. And I knew he was going to India the next day to make some more arrangements. So I stayed up all night and read the script and sent him a cable, which is what we did in those days. And I just said, yes, love, Billy. I then went to photograph on Golden Pond. I was there for about um, three or four months. But eventually I got confirmation that the deal was on. And then I went off to India with Ben Kingsley about a month ahead. He fasted and learned how to spin. And I went round and found locations, got to know the Indian crew and things like that, and we made all the preparation. Well, it was a very tough environment because it was obviously hot and dusty and travelling was not easy and it was a tough schedule. We'd leave at seven in the morning and get back about eight at night and then we'd watch the rushes on a mobile projector. So they were very long days, but it was an intensely rewarding film and satisfying film to be involved in because you really felt, gosh, here's somebody who really changed history and this is his story. Richard Attenborough had spent 18 years trying to put this together in terms of casting and finance. It was largely through his son Michael, who's a theatre director, that they found Ben. Because Michael was directing at Stratford with Ben Kingsley. By some coincidence, Ben Kingsley's father is from Gujarat where Gandhi was born, but of course, great, great acting. He ages about 50 years in the film. So as the old man, he would spend about two hours in makeup. When he came on the set, he was in character in every sense. I remember one day we rehearsed a scene, and I said, well, Ben, would you, know, would you like to go and sit and relax while I set up the scene? And, he nodded his head and smiled at me. He was 36, and I thought he was an old man. He was so convincing. Well, it was a hundred days. I didn't change the film stock or the development, and there was no filtration, apart from polar screens and 85. There was no softening of the image. We didn't want that. It was anamorphic, of course, Panavision. It was a normal range of lenses. I would say that photographically it was fairly traditional. Richard doesn't like to explore too much with the camera. He's pretty straightforward in the way he likes to shoot things because he is primarily, of course, an actor's director. He had a great sense of what he wanted. And we, of course, we went to a lot of actual locations so that we tried to capture the essence of the particular place where he lived and where, you know, salt march and things like that were all shot in the real place. There was one particular scene where he sent to prison for seven years for sedition. And we went to the original courtroom in Bombay where this happened. And we looked at it with the production designer and everybody and we all said, yes, okay, we could work here. Well, it's quite difficult in India to get permission to do things. The authorities were very reluctant to give the okay on this courtroom. And in the end, Richard Attenborough ran out of patience and he said, forget it, we'll shoot it in England. Well, the production designer was Stuart Craig. He took all the measurements of the original courtroom and he built it at a complete 
replica. And he put a few palm trees outside the window and we brought in an Indian crowd and we were back in India. And so that, you know, is the kind of authenticity that pervades the film, I think. We would have days where we'd be in one place with 5,000 crowd, and then the next day we'd be somewhere else with another big crowd. So it was a nightmare for the production office, you know, because of transportation and all the arrangements. We had a huge Indian crew, and, and we had two production offices, one British and one Indian, working in different languages, and, you know, so... But it all, it was a marvellous piece of planning. Well, he was a very nice, considerate man, you know. He, he was really interested. He knew all the crew, all the crew by their first names. And he was absolutely committed to this project. He had tremendous support you know, from the crew. So that all counts, you know. And, when you're really behind the director and supporting him and respecting him. And he was a really nice man, genuine, good man. We'd been shooting for some, some months and um, I got a slip disc and I had to come back to England for treatment and we needed a replacement. I knew that Ronnie Taylor had worked with, with Richard when Ronnie was a camera operator. He was a camera operator on Young Winston and Oh What Lovely War. So I knew that he'd worked with, with Richard and so I put, put forward his name to come in and replace me, which he did very well. And so at the end, it was agreed we'd share the credit. I went back to India and then, you know, I finished the film in London. But Ronnie did a lot of the work. Never happened to me before or since to have to leave a picture. But there wasn't anything else I could do. There was also some very good work by an Indian second unit director called Govind Nihalani. He did the partition scene. One group of people were going towards Pakistan and the other one was coming the opposite way. And a fight starts. And he did that on his own. That was all entirely the Indian crew. Well, Richard wanted authenticity and to capture the spirit of the man and the environment that he lived in and the attitudes, the political situation, of course. And it was, it was a very good script, Jack Riley's script. All the details seemed to come together because it had been well researched. He knew what he wanted. He spent all these years preparing and he'd been to India many times and he just knew what he was looking for. I remember my old friend Freddie Francis who was a great cinematographer who became a director and then went back to cinematography. And I remember him saying that Three types of photography, there's, there's good photography, and bad photography, and the right photography. So the right photography can, has, sometimes has to look kind of gritty and ugly. 